<laughs> Kung Fu Panda 4 really solidified that this franchise has the best action in like Western animation. Yeah. And we've come such a long way since the first movie. Can you talk about those advancements to get the action so like fluid and dynamic? Well, one, it helps that a lot of the artists and animators worked on part one, two, three, and now four. So they know this the, They know this world, they know the characters, and they're some of the best. I think they are the best animators I've ever worked at, at DreamWorks Animation. But beyond that, we also inherited a lot of new, fresh animators, and uh, some of them grew up with Kung Fu Panda. Like, they were little kids in the theater for Kung Fu Panda 1, and now they had tears in their eyes because they're like, I can't believe I'm gonna get to animate Poe, this is amazing. So um, I think that combination like really elevated all of the sequences that we worked on. We also tried a new technique that we hadn't done in the previous films. One, we, uh, we hired uh, a stunt team, a lot of people that worked on Marvel films, and they would enact and do kung fu moves, and we'd videotape them, and the woman who played Jen actually wore a big tail so the animators could watch the follow through of all that. And they did some spectacular, authentic moves, specifically with Poe's new weapon, the Staff of Wisdom. And then the animators would take that and elevate it even more. And then we had another team of animators that actually, and this is weird, I called it mixing old school with new school. They would hand draw it with a pencil and we would hand animate it. And we'd get it and it would create a really cool look and it have like a loose feel to it. And then we'd put it over into CGI and into the computer and animate it only after hand drawing and it actually saved time. I called it mixing old school with new school. It's a really wonderful technique that we got to do. Well, it looks fantastic. I also gotta ask because fans are so excited specifically about the return of Tai Long. Yeah. But in the movie, it, there is a nostalgic element, but he's there for like a reason. Yeah. It's just not there to like, you know, be like nostalgic for cheap It's not things. gratuitous. Exactly. Yeah. Can you talk about that and also like bringing back, obviously Lord Zen's in it. Yeah. But they don't, they don't talk. It's only Tai Lung. Only Tai Lung's got a big role in this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's probably why it took so long to get this film to the theaters is we wanted to make sure we we're telling the best story, the most epic adventure, furthering Poe's Poe's adventure and, and making sure we had really good themes. But the hardest thing was this franchise has the best villains ever created in any animated franchise. And we wanted to make sure we had the best, most kick-ass villain that we could create. And a lot of that was about like going back to my favorite villain of all time, Tai Lung. And fortunately, Ian McShane came back and did a voice for us. And, um, and again, it all came from like, we want the story to earn every decision that we make. It can't be gratuitous. Right. And, uh, and it all comes from that villain. It all makes sense. And I got to ask to wrap up, because I just told Jack this, but I think it's insane that I grew up with the original Kung Fu Panda in 2008. I'm now in my late 20s. Yeah. And now I have nieces and nephews who yeah. are going to grow up with Kung Fu Panda 4. Yeah. It's almost like a little like, oh, I can't, you can't even uh, believe it. Yeah. Obviously, everyone wants to ask you, what about Kung Fu Panda 5? You know, but like right now, you, have, you must have all these ideas. What kind of potential do you see for like a future? A future because it does seem like a generational franchise now. It does. As we're it passing does. it from one generation to the next, do you see it lasting much longer? Or, well, you know, I work on a lot of franchises, and the funnest thing about that is to really analyze like why is this film still around? Like, what is it about this film or these characters that everyone wants to keep seeing for part like two, three, four? And for this one, it's a really simple answer is Jack Black. Like Jack Black is the Kung Fu Panda. Like he could do high Kung Fu kicks like the Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> he's a fanboy, just like Kung Fu Panda. Uh, he's funny. And there's a very, uh, you know, there's a very uh, thin line between the animated character and the real life human Jack Black. And I think if, uh, whether I'm working on it or not, if Jack Black, is the Kung Fu Panda, I'm gonna be there. Uh, whether I'm working on it or with popcorn in the theater, I wanna see him do anything. And I think uh, the world that, uh, that we've created throughout the years on Kung Fu Panda, it only gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, I couldn't say even better myself. Oh, <laughs> Thank nice! You so much. Yeah, I'm sure you saw hints at the end. Oh, of you course. see, yeah. the Furious Five are there. You know, you yep. could you could tell stories about them forever.